Uh, different ways to win, I guess, is one thing. Like, we've had some good starts to games for sure. We've had leads. We had not a very good start against Vegas where we found a way to get our game going the second half of the game. Um, and I, I think a lot of um, the rest of our game is still we're trying to get it to where we want to be consistent in what we're doing. So it's early in the season, of course, and um, your special teams last game, we did a good job. Um, that's important for us for sure, but it's just still everything we're doing is a work in progress right now. And we want to make sure that this homestand that we're on, we take advantage of. Um, we try to work in, in weeks when we build our schedule and we want to do a great job with the next game that's in front of us, and that's Buffalo tomorrow night. Is it important? I, I know every team's kind of in the same boat where their game's not going to be fine-tuned in game three, but is it important to get sort of the rewards early? Uh, it, it's nice to get the wins and the two points if that's what you're kind of getting at, but um, the most important thing is how you play the game because if you're consistent with, with how you do with your, your process, your details, um, you're going to win more often than you're not. So if you do things the right way, Hey, you're not going to get the results every night. That's just the way the game works. But more often than not, you're going to find yourself on the right side. And that's what we want our guys to understand is there is a certain way for our team to play. And it can't be a 40-minute thing. It's got to be a 60-minute thing. And it can't be once every two or three game thing. It's got to be an all-the-time thing for us to be the team we want to be. How does a mature team like this manage you know, three games against top teams in the conference and won all three? How does a mature team manage the emotions of that versus perhaps teams in the past where maybe it got too high or got too low? Uh, I think that comes down to the people that we have in our room now too. So that's that's one thing when you look around. I mean, we've had Luch and we've had Louis and Tyler was here last year, guys that won a Stanley Cup, but there's more now. It just feels like there's, um, they have a better understanding of the ups and downs in games. They know how to shift the momentum in a game so you're not on your heels for too long. If you have momentum, they understand how you have to keep it. Um, Cads is one guy that really is hes in, coming off Stanley Cup win, so he really has a good idea as to what's going on. So you have to make sure that you stick with what you do well, and those guys in our dressing room are able to keep the boat steady, if you want to say, and make sure guys understand that it's about how we play and everything will take care of itself from that point. But I do think those those older guys that we do have now are, are legitimate in our dressing room. I have a question about a, a drill you were putting together before the end of uh, practice today where uh, you were firing pucks uh, towards the crease area and you had a defender either defending and another defender trying to come around the other side. What was the purpose of that drill? Is it to get the defender to properly defend that play? Or are you setting up some kind of play where you're involving your defenseman to contribute offensive? Uh, no, it's for our defensemen when they're checking games. So it's using their stick the right way. And I guess, um, you know, there's so many skilled players nowadays that they're able to make plays through you and around you. So if we can keep working on getting better in that area in regards to how we use our stick to our advantage, both um, in regards when we're taking the rush on, but also when we're closing in certain situations. So it's just a short little drill where they don't do it long, but it's the repetition that I think makes them better when they get an opportunity to do that. Ryan, what makes go ahead, go ahead, Benny. Blake Coleman and Michael Backlund such a good fit together? Um, well, Blake is one of the guys that I think has um, raised the, the leadership level in our room. So I, I didn't say him first, but he, he's one guy that understands that, hey, there's, there's ups and downs to a game. Um, he understands how to shift momentum. He's the type of player that if we're not playing well, he knows that it might be a big hit. He knows it might be a forecheck. He knows it might be a shot block. So he's a guy that understands that. With backs, I, I, I don't know. I just feel like he's a different guy this year in regards to how he's playing the game. He's playing hard um, right from face-off circles out, special teams, five on five. I think he's done a really good job of, of elevating his game early in the season. And I think it's making the guys around him better. At what point does a player sell into their role and, you know, the, the idea of going out of your comfort zone and whether it's a skilled player making a big hit or blocking a shot, at what point, what's the balance between sticking to your identity versus getting out of your comfort zone on the ice? Um, winning, and I think being part of a winning team. Like, I, I think that's something that young players learn in, at times in junior where they realize that their skill set isn't quite the same as it used to be in minor hockey where they can't score as much as they want, so they have to change their game. Well, the same thing applies here. Guys that were offensive guys in junior, um, maybe they are not offensive here, so they've got to change their game as well. And 
Um, usually it takes a few years for guys to understand that there's a certain role that they have to play and once they really get a handle on that, they become really good players because they know where they fit and each team has a spot for certain players and the smart ones can pick that spot out and they can make a really long, great career out of it. But the, the big thing to have a good team is guys that are willing to give a little bit of themselves up for the betterment of the group and I think we have some guys that are more than willing to do that this year. Just two quick ones for me. Um, you talked about Michael Backlund and his engagement. A, has that been reflective even in the face-off circle where two games in a row has been really good? And my other one is just how you felt about your defensive core as a whole in their checking game early in the season. Um, backs first, like face-offs last night, special team-wise, that's a big part of the game. And our guys were great in the circle last night, so we have to challenge them to be better. We have targets that we want them to get to all the time, and, and they're up against some good centermen, but they're good too. So I, I think they've taken that on um, as a, a bit of a challenge. And I think, you know, Michael yeah, in particular, he wants to raise his percentage. Uh, and he did his, a great job for us last night and the game before, as you said. The guys in the back end, um, you know, they're not, with the exception of, of Big Z, the most physical group at times, but they have to all, you know, we always talk about playing the right way as a group. Um, there's a way we expect them to play, and that's being fast, that's closing quick, and that's being hard. Um, that's still something that we're working towards getting better at consistently. Um, but the mobility of our back end should allow us to be hard to play against, and that's on the checking side too. Even if you're not the most physical guy, you should be able to play in people's face and do a good job with your stick and make sure you're strong when you get into the battle areas down low and in front of our goaltenders. Ryan, there were three guys we talked so much about coming into this season, the three new guys. They've all had kind of one game offensively where their fingerprints were all over it. But how have you seen those three specifically sort of fit in what you guys are doing here so far? Uh, I, I think they fit in really well. Um, and the one cool part about the three of them, they're all vocal. So we have more conversations now um, between our players than we have in the past, which I, I think that comes with maturity and, and older players for sure, but a little bit of experience as we talked about with the first couple of questions. Like, CADS understands you have to really have a connection with the people you're on the ice with. So if they don't like the way something's done, there's a lot of communication going on right now. And a lot of those um, guys have brought that in and it's making their, the guys that were here in the past um, be a part of that as well. So that's something that's been a, a, a noticeable difference that we're a much more vocal team. Um, in behind the scenes, I guess I could say. A yeah. coach must appreciate that. Uh, they're engaged. When they're communicating, they're engaged, and you know they are. So they realize that they're, they're the ones playing the game. So, I mean, we can direct and we can push them into certain situations, but if they see something, they have the skill set a lot of times that maybe this will work. So when you see them thinking about different options that they can use, it's, it's a positive sign for sure. Right, Two-part question. We always hear coaches and players talk about the importance of playing fast. How would you describe playing fast, and are you happy with how fast your team is playing right now? I think we're getting there. Again, that's something we're going to continue to work on. Uh, for me, playing fast is puck speed. Um, you don't have to be the, the fastest player in the league on your skates, um, but you have to think it. You have to think fast, so you have to be willing to go to places where you're going to get the puck. And two, when you have the puck, you have to move it in a hurry, so it's not stick handling and over handling and waiting for a second option to show up. You have your first option, make your play right away. And that's kind of what um, playing fast is to us. Um, but it's also a mindset. So if, if we're thinking about going a certain direction or we're anticipating where a puck's going to go, we get there one second quicker. That's faster. So it's, it's really, you know, it sounds kind of silly, but it's the, the way we look at it. It's safe to say that playing fast starts in practice because watching you guys practice, it jumps out to me the, the pace that you guys are practicing at. Yeah, well, that's something we've changed for the last couple, year and a half, I guess, where we never go to the board. I don't remember a time since Daryl's been here where we've gone to the board. So the guys are responsible for knowing what drills we have. They're posted in practice or before they head on the ice. Um, we go over it sometimes, but if they're familiar with the drills, we don't even touch on it. They just go. Um, they understand what they're supposed to do, so then it becomes about pace and execution. So the faster you are doing those drills that you know how to do, you eventually become faster in games. So repetition and practice is what allows you to be faster in a game for sure.